Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm Steve Pomeroy, Chief Technologist for Imperva Camouflage. Today, I'd like to talk to you about data masking, what it is, how it works, and why you should use it. To start, I'd like to talk about the challenge that many of our customers are facing. As most people know, the volume of data that our organizations have to manage is growing quite quickly. The production data that we use to run our organizations is what most people think of when they think about that data growth. However, there's also significant growth in the number of copies that are being made of those uh, production databases. In a recent study by IDC, that number on average was found to be 10 times. So for every production database, on average there are 10 copies being made. Obviously, that's a, a huge amplification of the attack surface there. Another thing that uh, most people aren't aware of is that even though the sensitive data is being copied, the security controls around that data don't necessarily follow. So the controls that we have around the production environments are not typically in place around those lower environments. So why are all of these copies being made? there's a number of legitimate business reasons driving those copies. For example, uh, dev and test is one reason that the copies are being made, as well as to grant access to third parties, contractors and so on. They're also being made in support of training for the, the realistic scenarios that that represents, as well as in support of uh, analysis. So let's talk a little bit about the solution. At Imperva, we conceptualize this as map, unlock, and accelerate. So in map, we're helping you understand your sensitive data landscape. What databases do you have? What's in them? We help classify the data, essentially help create an inventory of your sensitive data. We then take that sensitive data inventory and feed it to our data masking engine, which basically removes the sensitive data and replaces it with a realistic fictional equivalent, thereby unlocking that data, which then accelerates all of these downstream processes. And just to touch on a couple of them, uh, DevOps, because you've got uh, realistic but fictional data, it just helps drive that process faster. In moving to the cloud, many organizations start by moving their dev workloads there first. And data masking is a great way to start that adoption. So for example, you can mask your sensitive data on-prem prior to moving it to the cloud. So it's, just, it's a great way to start that cloud adoption. It also helps drive compliance. So compliance with things like PCI, HIPAA, uh, GDPR is another um, common one today. And it works in concert with understanding the scope of sensitive data that's within your organization as well as minimizing the scope of that data. Of course, security is also important. So data masking we view as an important additional security layer in protecting that sensitive data. So just imagine uh, all of those copies that are made, applying masking to it. If a hacker were to breach and get into those copies, he's essentially stealing fictional data. So let's talk a little bit about how it works. With masking, we're physically attaching to the database and then replacing that sensitive data, as I said, with a realistic fictional equivalent. So in this scenario, we have things like names, birth dates, email addresses, and so on. Uh, you, you see the real data here. When it's masked, it's essentially indistinguishable from the original data. Names still look like names birth dates that look like birth dates, and so on, really retaining that realism, that high quality of the data. It's also retaining all of the data relationships, which is critical uh, when you're working with those copies of data. So why? Why should we do masking? To kind of summarize some of the things that I've touched on in the past few minutes, it's about data minimization. So when you apply masking to all of those copies, you're essentially removing the risk from those copies. You're reducing the scope of the sensitive data, so essentially uh, minimizing the amount of sensitive data that you have, which obviously decreases the associated risk. 
why is the realistic data so important? When it comes to functions like uh, development and testing, <clears throat> the earlier in the cycle that you can catch uh, bugs, uh, the cheaper it is to fix. Uh, the easier it is to fix them. And then the outcomes, so the software that's developed, the system that's deployed, is much more likely to be of high quality and to be successful because it's, it, it's been developed with that quality data and caught those defects early. So that's why it's critical to have that realistic component of the mass data. Uh, that also factors into analytics as well, where you don't require access to the individual uh, personal information, uh, just that uh, realistic equivalent of it, so that you can still get the valid analyses from it. It also helps limit, on a need-to-know basis, access to that sensitive data. So without masking, all of these functions essentially happen against those copies, against that realistic data, when they really shouldn't be. They should be operating against mass data, which removes that risk, removes access to that sensitive data from those job functions, but allows them to proceed uh, quite successfully. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to hear me speak through uh, data masking, what it is, how it works, why you should use it. And please tune in to our next Whiteboard Wednesday session.